Everybody, it's uh, Chris over Dixieland Farm, and these are contest entries. There's a lot of contests going on, and I don't. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to combine them all into one big video. So, uh, Robert Z's contest is have your significant other in the video, and I have her. Lily! Mwah! <laughs> and my beautiful wife. There she is. Contest number. Two, Steven, Elevators fan, um, best side one. It's such a VC answer, I know, but this one just kept sticking with me, um, probably to the chagrin of my wife, Marissa. It is yeses, close to the edge. Side A is close to the edge. Um, if you've never heard this album and a VC member and probably a male, because females, you wouldn't, you, you know, at Prague... This is prog rock, masterpiece. It doesn't get better than this. Doc said this is the only Yes album you need. He is right, most likely, uh, for Yes. I mean, I love Fragile also, but... Uh, or did he say that about Yes songs? Well, he, he meant this if he didn't say it. <laughs> so, uh, you know, you got the, the Dean artwork where you can just uh, stare at it. Dean! So... Close to the edge, side A, just a, uh, she, she prefers the boogie. So, side A. Memphis Jim and the Misses, uh, right, perfect, you remember what your contest said? This is my entry, <laughs> side A, B, this is just a perfect album, perfect, perfect, perfect. Colin, Medicine Horse, so this is the fourth contest now I'm entering at only a minute 59 seconds is what else do you collect I collect DVDs I've shown them in a previous video uh, we've got at least 1500 DVDs if not more so much so that we've got it organized in this book and what I do is I put them in a program and then I print this out every once in a while and then we've got like full descriptions the program goes online finds the synopsis for you, cover art and all that. So that is, it, it, the collection is so big I've given up on alphabetizing. I got rid of all my DVD cases, Colin. Uh, so I just have just the discs because honestly, you know, I, it's just, it would take up way too much room. I've already taken up way too much room with my crap here. Uh, wouldn't you agree, Marissa? Oh, yeah. So there you go. Last contest, Corey. Overkill vids. Uh, congratulations on your 300. Uh, congratulations on anybody who's reached a milestone in this video, uh, which must be Steven also. Best concert experiences. I'm going to go for two, all right? First one, Marissa was not there for. The second one, I don't think she was there for it. First content, uh, concert, Flaming Lips. Uh, I would be holding Clouds Taste Metallic for this concert. That's when I saw uh, them. So it was right after uh, She Don't Use Jelly hit big, and Cloud Takes Metallic was a great album. Both wonderful, uh, perfect 10 albums to me. Uh, Ronald was still in the band, and he played amazing guitar, very different kind of guitar player. And this was at Irving Plaza in New York City, which holds, I think, about 1,500 people, would you say? Do you remember? No. Are you talking about... Where we saw... Um, Trackenberg, and we saw Ween at that place. Yeah. That, that's Irving Plaza. Irving Plaza. Yeah. yeah about about 1,500 people. Problem with Irving Plaza is um, it's like a normal city building. So it's very, it's rectangular and very long, which for a concert, it, it wasn't sloped either. Uh, so I always made sure I got the, you know, for some reason, I guess city people thought it was cool to not get in the concert when it started, which was great for me. So I was always up front. So almost every band I've ever seen, it like front row, uh, you know, back, Jonathan Richmond, which, you know, that's not a hard concert. But anyway, so Flaming Lips and their decorations, they were still pretty low rent at that point, was it had to be thousands and thousands of Christmas lights. They actually just kept them in the package where it's got that spiral and they put all, them all over the stage. So it was all these uh, uh, Christmas lights and they turn on their equipment, before, you know, they wander on the stage, and there they are, you know, it's, there's no curtain. 
um, and they turn on the equipment and it's already loud. It's way too loud. Now, Rob's saying how loud Led Zeppelin was. They couldn't have been as loud as the Flaming Lips. So loud before they played the guitar, you could hear air. It's just white noise. <laughs> like, um, like Back to the Future. The second Ronald hit that guitar, my friends that were with me <laughs> go like that. And they just, what the hell did we just get involved in? Why are we sitting, standing next to this speaker stack? He runs. My friend, I don't know what he said to me. He ran to the bathroom and got us toilet paper to jam in our ears to sort of protect it. Great concert. So loud. The next morning, I was cleaning my ears and they were black. That's from the dried blood. I know I lost lots of my hearing at that one concert. Wanted to tell that, that that was one concert story. The other one is this guy, Daniel Johnston. Marissa, I, were you there the time Daniel forgot his notepad? No, I went with you the time after. Went the time, at the, the, the really long concert afterwards? Yeah, he played for a while. That's when we're corn mode. All right, so we saw Cornmo there. If you want to see a great guy, look up Cornmo. Uh, he was the opening act. Uh, one man band plays accordion, funny songs. Wrote a song about uh, him looking like Gary Busey. Um, I interviewed him, I think, for a zine. I don't remember, but anyway. So Daniel Johnson has a book like this with all his lyrics in it. All right, so when I saw him at this concert, this was at the Knitting Factory in New York City. Much smaller club. Great club to see bands in. And Daniel cannot perform without his book. Okay? He's uh, schizophrenic. Please, if you haven't seen the very good documentary, The Devil and Daniel Johnson, it's available free at crackle.com. You can go see it right now. Uh, Sony Pictures Classics put it out. It's a real documentary. Great documentary. And you can watch it for free. So go ahead. You know, not now, but in a couple of minutes. So, anyway, he cannot perform without his book, right? So, this is, um, he hadn't performed, like, in four or five years in New York City. Lost his book. Cannot perform. We're waiting for him to come on. And waiting. And waiting. And waiting. 45 minutes we're waiting. In a Manhattan club. Right? What would you think would happen? If you picked... Nobody cared. You're right. Everyone loved, Everyone knows his story. Everyone knows he's got problems. They didn't give him any crap. The audience was super supportive of him. He came out, and he was wearing sweatpants, and I swear there was a pee stain on his sweatpants. His whole front crotch area was completely... Completely, that's how nervous he was. And he went and he sang two or three songs, one of them being Casper the Friendly Ghost, you know, the one that he, you know, he identifies himself as. Uh, maybe Funeral Home, which, you know, and that's about it. And I, I, literally, three songs and picked up and left. He ran out. Found out that his father was his handler, you know, his guardian. Uh, so he's, you know, his father was there. We saw him just hanging around, you know, standing next to us. So he got away from him, and I found out that he went and just hung out with some like Bowery bums. He got beat up, and he showed up in a homeless shelter three days later. <laughs> the next concert was with Marissa and Cornmo, I think, or there was one after. I don't remember, but he felt so bad about. The last time he was in New York, he played for way too long. He played for like an hour and a half, which I'm a huge fan, and I was even like, it's time, you know. But an amazing concert, um, and he played piano and and, and 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 guitar, and it was just fantastic. So those are my two concert stories. Let's see, I think that was five concerts, uh, uh, five uh, contests. That's Robert Z, Stephen, Colin. Um, Memphis Final Gym, and Corey. Goodbye, everybody!